it's constantly being able to adapt. I agree. And um, I think along with that is, you know, influence as well. Like, are you, are you putting out stuff that's encouraging positive conversation and positive engagement? Or are you complaining virtually that, you know, oh, this whole pandemic thing sucks? Like, yeah, I, you know, it does obviously stink for a lot of people, but like, how are you encouraging others to be in a better place than what they are now? Or are you, you know, like, are you reaching out to someone and just giving them tips on how to be a better athletic trainer or personal trainer? Am I teaching someone how I did a certain edit if they reach out? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. just like kind of giving back as well. I think Because you can be important. support for other people. Right. What's up, y'all? Back with another LT360 podcast. You know who I am. And if you were around since the beginning, you know who this man is as well. The second guest to ever be on the podcast. He's back again, Mr. Greg Camelone. He is a uh, amazing photographer. He is um, working his way up in the sports world. And uh, we have so much to catch up on. Uh, so this is literally going to be just that it's going to be me and him catching up and I'm, uh, super stoked to, uh, have you on, dude. How, how, how are you doing? Where are you? I don't, I can't even keep up. I don't know. You're in New York. Oh, good. No, uh, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm pumped. I was looking forward to it. We, uh, I know what schedules we've had to kind of reschedule here and there, but I'm excited. We finally got to make this work. Yeah, um, dude. Me too. I'm back in New York right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, been here since May, so I graduated from Southern Illinois in May uh, with a master's degree. And you know, being in college athletics during the pandemic and whatnot, I kind of threw everything for a loop. Um, so basically, just you know, of course, my parents have been great and allowed me to come back home and just kind of save money and figure things out until hopefully things either figure itself out or the world <laughs> goes back to somewhat normal. Okay. Um, so in the meantime, just been helping my mom with her business, um, kind of creating my own little side business as well, freelancing. Um, and yeah, just trying to stay proactive, you know, watch YouTube tutorials and learn as much as I can. Um, set out code emails, you know, hey, can I come shoot this? Can I film this? Whatever it can be. Because um, the last thing I want to do is have nothing to showcase when it comes time to, you know, obviously I've been applying to jobs too and interviewing and whatnot, but you know, I got to have things to show for myself in the meantime, so. No, for sure. You got to have a portfolio of sorts, right? Yeah, so uh, thankfully sports have finally gotten, or high school sports have gotten back into things mm -hmm. here in New York. Um, they're not allowing any fans, or at least like, so by me, it, it's section nine, like basketball, for example, they're mm -hmm. in section nine and their COVID protocols aren't allowing anybody in, like not even family members can go watch their kids Thank play, God. so um they're all doing like live streams and stuff so I'm like hey like can I just come shoot anyways though or you know like trying to like get my foot in the door somewhere or just you know again get those reps in um or, uh, a lot of be, in charge of, be in charge of a live stream and right. then you have the opportunity to you know well I'll leave the camera here and record while I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, snap some um so you know again it's it's just kind of trying to put my name out there as much as I can um yeah. yeah I've I've gotten to work for two semi-pro teams which has been really cool um, cool in the in the New York area yeah so one was a basketball team they're called the Syracuse Stallions um mm -hmm. they're actually going to be in what's called the basketball league now um I believe actually Pedro from Pedro Bone or however oh, you say it yeah, yeah, yeah. he plays for one of the teams that's in that league um that's cool. so uh they had a they were kind of doing like a, a tour, the Syracuse Stallions, where they were doing like tryouts and or really like a combine in different areas. So they came near a town where I live and uh, basically went and covered a video recap for them, shot some photos as like a little extra, like, you know, add this in with the package. And um, they really liked it. Unfortunately, like Syracuse is like six plus hours from where I live in yeah. New York. So I, <laughs> I don't think they're really not going to lead to anything continuous but it's a connection i have still if they're ever again on the road or you know if i'm in that area i know i can get yeah. some working with them or if a team pops up in that league that's like maybe you know an hour and a half or two hours south of you and that becomes something more realistic and 
right. you know, hey listen i did work for the stallions like if you you know need to ask them and so that's cool man yeah so you know even just like the players like they see your stuff and they're like oh can you uh come from a workout or you know yeah, you get shots up, whatever so you know you just gonna have to be proactive in that sense and don't sell mm -hmm. yourself short for sure that's that's big culture in basketball is like having someone there filming workouts uh, right. and making um you know some sort of reel of of those workouts and adding mm -hmm. some dope music and cool transitions and that's huge culture in basketball where you don't see that as much in other sports. Yeah, I agree. Especially like, like the trainers, like that's a big thing now too, is like, they're trying to, you see a lot of like these basketball videographers on Instagram who are like with a trainer or certain trainers and they're just there every day, like filming, you know, whatever athletes they have come in and work out and whatnot. And, oh, that's so I mean, true. Hey, you know, if it, if it makes money or if it helps yeah. the recruit or whatever, then it's going to last, you know? yeah and for you i mean uh i mean neither one of us mind being on a basketball court all day so <laughs> yeah that's the thing it's like to me that's like the best of both worlds because i get to be creative and just be around the sport still yeah um but uh that and then a, a football team there's a semi-pro football team that's around here in the hudson valley and uh they asked me actually asked me to be like their team videographer mm -hmm. um so really like kind of like not like it's a contract but basically our agreement is is um you know if i can make it to a game i show up and fill the game and make a, a video they'll pay me um they have like a, a combine workout tryout mixture thing coming up next weekend so i'll be there shooting that um so yeah it's cool you know i'm, I'm excited to work with them because like a lot of the players are really into it and like i messaged me like oh let's try this or let's do this so um, hopefully like just for me as a creative, I'll get to kind of be, um, more creative, but also like direct a little bit more too. Like if I have ideas and they have ideas, it's like, all right, well, like, let's not just talk about it. Let's do it. Um, sure. see how we can get the equipment to do it or, you know, where are the locations we want to film this at? Like actually like take action on it. And like, you know, I'm the only guy. So like, I'd really actually get to be like everything as mm -hmm. far as how it would come together so Take looking forward to it and make it come to life for real yeah. so even like because i've obviously been in the division one athletics realm and like can i make something to that same extent with like a team that's not that level like yeah they're semi-pro but like you know it's not like they have this full staff around them and yeah they have to just be me and like my personal equipment so like I don't know. I'm, I like, you know, I like a good challenge. So uh, see uh, what we can come up with. And, you know, again, what ideas actually happen and what ideas maybe get pushed to the back burner. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm excited for it, especially as the weather's starting to get nicer here and whatnot. Like maybe do like uh -huh. some jersey reveals or something like really showcase like the culture of this area and then like the personality of the team, I think would be really cool. So that would be sick. I'm, ex I'm excited to see what you come up with because I know so much of your your work from niu um was amazing like it was just it was super clean uh in the the kind of i want to say like the personality that the photos um took on uh was it, it spoke basketball i don't know there was a there was a dark um undertone of like this is this is basketball culture um from from so many of those shots that i saw you do and not only the shots but the, uh, i think you did a couple of videos as well yeah yeah i uh basically when i was at siu like i had to of course cover any home events and yeah any of the games had. so um biased of course towards basketball just because that's what i played bit. growing up and <laughs> it's where my interest lies so that kind of I don't know if that's why I just like certain photos more or that's just what I got to shoot more of, whatever. But um, I did get to shoot a variety of sports there. But, yeah, you know, there's there's like a lot of attitude in basketball. And um, really what I really like about working in sports is that these all these individuals have stories. Um, you know, like I'm a big, big guy on the more than an athlete scheme. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like I was very into that before. Like that saying became a saying like um you know we have to remember that these are human beings that we're watching and being entertained by not just 
people participating in a sport you know Dude, um, you know what i you know what really bothers me is the the average you know uh, sports entertainment consumer who watches and they have no understanding of that and it, it's it's so bothersome to watch sports with them yeah. and especially especially when someone is having a bad game or someone is injured like the thing that messes me up with football or all the time because it happens just more frequently yeah. is like some dude gets lit up he tears his acl like something really bad happens and like oh who are we gonna have to fill that spot yeah <laughs> what <laughs> how about the person that just got you know their whole life twisted upside down and then all of a sudden you're worried about like this that and the next as a fan mm-hmm. um that that's always bothered me and being obviously athletes most of our life we understand that a little bit more of like there's someone that is you know their their confidence is riding on that they're income is riding on that their overall lifestyle and day-to-day you know habits are relying and and riding on that so right you know it's it's people get mad when their car breaks down but when someone's body breaks down that they (laughs) completely (laughs) rely on for work it's like oh you know who's gonna fill that up right It's, it's pretty wild to me and I've always, like, one thing that's kind of interests me is, like, the mental health of all that in af- athletics because, you know, like, it's a competition, so a lot of people see mental health as, you know, you're being vulnerable if you're coming forward about maybe something internally that's going on, and, mm-hmm. which that's understandable. Like, you know, that doesn't need to be something that's always so public or whatever. But, um, like, I've always thought that, like, sports psychologists should be way bigger and the athletic realm than what they are because like you said like if you're not someone who's played the sport like how could you fully understand what goes on because like you said if someone tears an ACL and they might have they might come back even better than ever and that's fantastic but like mentally after a hit or maybe a drive or whatever like in the back of their minds they might thinking like oh am I going to tweak a certain way or am I going to come down from a jump like wrong or whatever may happen like there's still some repercussions to that mentally it's not just the physical aspect of it um when I think about that obviously like with athletic training my thought process is like okay yeah I can physically rehabilitate this person but can I mentally do so and that's where I think um, our field doesn't do a good enough job of adding that into our you know basically our our undergrad or, or graduate you know, education process, right. which is something that I've been fortunate to understand more as someone who played a lot of sports. But you know, because you had friends in you know uh, my my major in, in our classes, it's like some of those people were not athletes whatsoever, and like right. their ability to relate to a, a player and understand what's going on with them was just completely absent and it's that's tough because now you're telling someone like oh we're gonna do this and do that and all right now you can like sit outside of practice and just watch (laughs) and they just don't have an understanding of what that does to a player right over so long so what have you been doing um with your what is your mom's business and how you've been helping her yeah so her business is called uh holy oats granola so she makes this wholesome product like she's very big into clean eating you know clean ingredients um Mm -hmm. so she wanted to based off some like family health history in the past she started her business like 12 years ago um and she wanted to make really just a wholesome healthy product that was unique and kind of different from the rest and when she was grocery shopping she noticed that a lot of granolas had like tons of sugar in them and like all this oh, fake crap and whatnot so she's so like so bad I can make something you know and here we are now 12 years later and she's still in business and I feel like each year just gets better but um what is it what is it called again holy oats so w-h-o-l-e-y and then mm-hmm. oats. um but uh yeah she makes a variety of granolas she makes a variety of bars um you know everyone 
at least that I've met seems to like it. <laughs> uh, you know, I eat it myself. It's, it's filling. Um, you know, you never feel like bloated or like gross after eating it. Um, but really, what, as far as, uh, oh, go I'm ahead. looking at it right now. What's your favorite flavor? Um, if I'm going for like, you know, I'm going to like be good. I'll probably have the maple nut granola and it's really good with like Greek yogurt, non fat Greek yogurt. You mix that together. Maybe <laughs> add your own fruit. Um, of course with fruit or dried fruit, there's of course going to be like a little bit, of, you know, sugar content in that. Um, mm -hmm. as far as sweets or a treat goes, then like the chocolate coconut almond bar is you know, real good, <laughs> but, uh, I like the apple walnut bar too. So like, that's the thing, like, you know, they're like, even as like something that's a treat, it's still like, you know, it's not going to knock you totally off your course. No, no. And like the bars come in a four pack and like one bar could probably keep me full for like four to six hours. Like it's oh. like, it's, it's a solid snack. It's, it's a filling thing. So to yeah. give some perspective, I'm going to, I'm going to read a little bit here. Yeah. Um, so they got non-GMO whole grain oats, organic whole wheat flour, pure honey, extra virgin coconut oil, organic eggs, almonds, chocolate, organic unsweetened coconut, organic coconut sugar, and pure vanilla extract. That's for the uh, chocolate coconut almond uh, bars. Yeah. And then for the, the maple walnut, dude, I, I'm always looking for, like, that is my number one weakness is, like, a a good bowl of granola with some like oat milk or, or almond milk yeah yeah um so the maple walnut is uh non-gmo whole grain oats with organic oat bran organic flax seed meal raw sunflower seeds raw pepitas raw almonds raw walnuts all mixed with a little bit of unsweetened fresh pressed apple juice and pure organic maple syrup yeah wow. so like with our uh the granola like we don't add any sugar um mm -hmm. that's the main thing and then like really the only sugar that goes into it is from the maple syrup and that's from a local farm that we use um, so we try to that's another thing that my mom really tries to do as well is keep everything local as much as she can um and i feel like she, for the type of product that it is she offers it at a reasonable price um, mm -hmm. but uh, to answer your question really i'm just helping her bake at the moment um just in the okay. kitchen you know st stirring it all up and <laughs> whatnot bagging it the whole deal um but you know you gotta just take these moments and appreciate time with family because uh like i said sure. you know, of course they're happy to have me home and helping her out you know i don't know what the deal is with covid in new york and whatnot but i feel like you know it's just like a safer precaution to have someone within your own house and family working for you than someone yeah. outside the realm um of course you know just we don't really have uh we're not really like a storefront we're just like a just yeah facility yeah we're a kitchen so yeah. um really it's just us two in there it, putting together the product and then she delivers it to wholesale accounts you know different farm stores and whatnot um and so, so now if i so if i i got three bags of maple walnut in the, in the cart right now <laughs> so if i if i order that you're you're making that right after the episode that we after yeah, we said yep okay it'll be uh it will be baked this week and shipped to you this week and uh and i make that so you it would be coming directly for me that, that's one of my duties is making that <laughs> so hell I'm, yeah i'm, I'm, I'm bars. seriously gonna uh order some when we, when we finish that. up here i don't want to take away and do it right now fill in all my oh, that's all right <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. but yeah uh, really um you know, of course, you can eat it straight out of the bag on your own, but I think like a nice, like you'll be full all day, I feel like, from just like some Greek yogurt and sprinkle mm -hmm. like granola in them with it. So uh, that was one of the breakfasts I would do when I was at SIU is okay. buy some, some holy oats and oh. pick up some Greek yogurt. And uh, Sweet. Yeah. now uh, speaking on the, on the trend of, um, you know, healthy uh, eating and, and lifestyle, what have you been doing for working out? How's that been going? What have you been, you been staying active, doing anything in particular? Yeah, so, you know, like I said, parents are great and whatnot, but, you know, there are pros and cons to living at home compared yeah. to when you're on your own. Um, so I haven't been going, I don't have like a gym membership or anything. I've been working out at home. Mm -hmm. um, thankfully, over the years, my brother and I have kind of collected 
you know, a decent amount of weights and equipment to get by. Uh, so I actually signed up for a beach body membership, those uh, online workouts. Mm -hmm. um, and they have like an app now that can go on Apple TV. So I just put it on the TV and like follow along. Um, because knowing me, like I could very easily just like go to my downstairs and pick up some dumbbells and start curling and it's like, <laughs> we do some, get some spot, like do yeah. what I want instead of like doing a variety, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah. I knew if like, if I like picked out these programs that I would be doing something different and like would be challenging myself to like do leg day or, you know, like do some <laughs> muscles that I maybe like a little less, but yeah um and it's been great like i honestly did um i don't know how to say the guy's first name but his last name is caesar he's like this big like jack tall black guy and phenomenal physique and i'm like all right like i'll take you on like let's do it and that was like the hardest like program i've ever done and i did like every video and it was six weeks and like i think more so like mentally like all right i just accomplished something that was like hard to show up every day like good for you like you can now yeah. go through other things is that every it's um, every day or four days a week or five or three like how does that work that was uh i want to say that was five there was like two days and because i've done a few now because then i did one that was called like lift four with with another guy and he did like a mixture of like weightlifting and like hit workouts um and right now I'm actually doing like a boxing program. I've always been interested in boxing and like yeah. learning how to box. Yeah. And uh, I do a lot of sitting with, you know, video editing and photo editing and whatnot and applying the job. So my hips are getting worse and worse. I'm just getting so tight and like <laughs> really is awful. And there's like, there's a lot of lower, like people just think like boxing is punching, but there's a lot of twisting in the hips and using yeah. legs and whatnot. So I was like, this is something new and like I said, I'm trying to do like new things to challenge my body. Cool. Um, so I'm doing that right now. And it's, it's a mixture of, you know, throwing punches and whatnot and uh, some weightlifting. So it's keeping me in shape. You know, I'm, I'm not getting fat, thankfully. Uh, <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to like when I feel like I could be safer, like not really. I'm more so concerned about my parents. Like uh -huh. I can get by doing workouts at home instead of like going out and doing things. Mm -hmm. Um, just because of certain health precautions and whatnot, but um, yeah, it's good. I'm I miss going to the gym now. I you know, again having all that equipment at my disposal, um, certain cardio stuff that I would like to do. But uh, yeah, I think you know just just getting by in the meantime with it. Cool. Um, and sometimes you got to maintain. Sometimes you got to level up. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and like, like honestly, like, sometimes I think like oh maybe I'll like keep this membership or whatever that I have and implement that more once I do start going back to like an actual gym just mm -hmm. so again I'm like more structured because I can easily just be like all right like you know certain body parts are certain days but like am I actually following like a routine to get better mm -hmm. most of the time I'll just show up and lift when when you are um, a member you're like basically you get um you get to log in and then you have options to choose from different programs. Uh, the programs are consistent of different coaches. I'm assuming like you were saying, mm -hmm. so the coaches get to uh, basically just make the videos and they have a timer on there and they're basically doing the workout while you are. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's like this high, pr highly produced thing. Like they got all these yeah. cameras and make it look all nice and whatever, yeah. but yeah, it's structured. So like, it'll say like, you know oh like lift up their body or like oh we're gonna you know they'll call it whatever they want and then uh, different programs or different time time limits like the six mm -hmm. weeks of the work I feel like those workouts were more close to like an hour each um and then these boxing workouts are more like 40 minutes each um but yeah you just a lot of them what's nice too is like for me it helps me like stay off my phone and get distracted because yeah. like when I'm doing this I actually don't really have music on because I'm listening and following yeah. along. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them will like, you know, you'll have like your water breaks here and there for some things, but like for the most part, it's like, go, go, go. Okay. So like, it's, it's very like productive workout time. You know, cool. I'm not just like, Oh, it's shoot, efficient use of like 30, yeah. Yeah. It's like an efficient use of 30 to 45 minutes as opposed to like 
well let me uh you know do some pull-ups some curls all right let me change the song i don't like that one let me right. go through my... yeah okay mm-hmm. that's cool that's what's up like you said you gotta sometimes uh sacrifice and and maintain a little bit and then try some new things and keep yeah. the body guessing what um so uh, my next question was going to be basketball related you probably haven't gone outside and shot a basketball um unfortunately not yeah I haven't played lately you've been watching a little bit honestly like it's funny like it's been hard for me to watch lately and i don't mean that in the sense of like oh i'm not entertained by, by the mm-hmm. game but like i even signed up for uh sling which is like that you know like tv subscription okay. so i could watch basketball and i like barely use it because like next you know i'm like either editing like a demo reel or like i'm watching youtube tutorials and then it's like 11 o'clock at night and i'm like oh well i'm gonna go to bed now or it just, <laughs> i don't know like it just i mean not to like make an excuse it just kind of like gets away from me a little bit um, i mean this you're not making excuses you're 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 getting getting shit done yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah, there's um, priorities, man. I mean, uh, it's it's entertainment versus creation. Like, what do we do? We want to continue to consume all the time, or right. do we want to start to create something for ourselves? So mm-hmm. It's a weird uh, balance that you got to find, especially at our age right now. Like, it seems so much easier uh, <laughs> ten years ago, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Um, but yeah, there's you, once you realize there's always an opportunity to get <clears throat> um, something productive done, and, and productive doesn't have to mean you know like uh, you know writing a paper for school or or um, watching a YouTube tutorial to learn something new. Productive can mean like you didn't sleep enough the night before because you did both of those things, and now you need to take a nap so that you're good for the rest of your day, and you spend 15 right. minutes doing that as opposed to 15 minutes you know scrolling through instagram or, or something you know monotonous uh, no i agree and like that's kind of one thing that i'm like still trying to what do i want to say like improve on and there's mm-hmm. one tip i forget who i heard it from but like say like you know i set my day working at home from like nine to five if i like strictly limit myself to that time then like chances are i would get more done because i know i only have that time to get stuff done whereas mm-hmm. if i'm like well, I'm going to be up till 11. I got time to, you know, maybe click Instagram <laughs> real quick, like you said, or like, you know, it forces you to like be more productive with that time that you have. Um, so like, that's another thing, just trying to like, like for me, like when I was at SIU, like there would be a lot of times where like, I would just eat dinner real quick. Cause it's like, well, I got schoolwork I got to finish or I got an edit I got to finish, or maybe I'm doing it while I'm eating. It's so, like yeah. now being home and like sitting down with my parents and won't like, sit down and chat for like a whole hour and just eat dinner and i'm thinking like like i just sat here for an hour i, I gotta get back to my computer you know or and it's just like one of those moments where it's like it's cool like you know value the time with your parents like enjoy this nice dinner you know like just no worries you've had a productive day otherwise um dude so yeah, i've been like, i've been feeling that a lot lately i think that's something that 2020 brought out of you know a lot of people yeah was that understanding that like you (laughs) be efficient with your time that is spent working Mm -hmm. and really enjoy the time that is um with people you love and care about like it's it's something that was law like for a long time i mean in a capitalistic society it's it's go 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 build 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 grow 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 and that's not necessarily a bad thing but compared to you know 200 years ago cultures were so much more like sit down enjoy breakfast with the family now go have a good productive day and come back enjoy dinner with the family or in other cultures like south america man it's like you literally go to work for the first four hours of your day then you go have a big lunch with like (laughs) your family in the middle of the day and you go back to work so um <clears throat> i i totally have been sitting on that uh that kind of balance beam too of trying to figure out like when do i push the envelope and overwork myself and when do i sit back and um say like 
okay, maybe you don't shove the food down your throat so that you <laughs> can continue to get work done. Like yeah. maybe you actually enjoy the food for what it is because that's an experience and that's beneficial and that's um, going to help as well. I don't know. That's like, I, like I try to tell myself too, like for instance, like going back to watching basketball, like I can turn that into a productive pastime because for instance, if say my dream goal is to eventually work in the NBA, like I kind of have to keep up with, what's going on or you know who is trending or you know what kind of content is working for the nba right now or you know if it's going to be on the live production side of things like what kind of shots are they selling to the audience or how are they cutting from one sequence to the other um that's a so great like, point dude damn you know, just like being like for me it's like you know i know the all-star games this weekend but like um you know as far as like who's the best in like each conference as far as teams go like I don't really know um mm -hmm. you know I know like the typical teams are still good but um I know Bradley Beal is having a good year <laughs> like yeah. you know I can name a few things but like you know LaMelo uh, Ball is trending <laughs> oh, LaMelo, you know, Ball. LaMelo Ball is trending yeah, yeah. <laughs> um uh, thankfully I am actually playing fantasy basketball with a few guys um so oh, of course cool. that like keeps me in it a little bit um I swear I'm like general manager of the year. I'm in first place right now. You know, I'm making all these moves. <laughs> um, but uh, no, like even so just stuff like that, you know, like find ways to like, all right, maybe if I am relaxing a little bit or if I'm playing video games or doing whatever, like maybe I can turn it, turn it into a productive. Uh, even if it's not turning it into something, you're recuperating. You know, yeah. I've been playing. But, I've been playing a lot more basketball and it's helped me mentally a lot more. Uh, mm -hmm. Just realizing that it's like, it's, it's, if I can dedicate, you know, an hour to not think about anything else uh, and just put myself in a moment um, that's beneficial regardless of what it, it is that you're doing. Um, right. So I've been doing a lot more of that. Um, body is like trying to keep up with that still. It's, it's not, <laughs> It's a little harder, <laughs> yeah. um, but it, it that's been huge for me. I play in a men's league right now. Um, oh, nice! And uh, for a while, I was going down to um, courts in between, kind of here in Miami, and going to play with one of my uh, old teammates who grew up in Miami. Mm. He uh, obviously has like a big crew of people down there so um him and all his boys go to these courts and i was going to meet them for endless amounts of like just saturdays we would go there in the afternoon and play um but then the, the league started and i started having uh, more kind of responsibility on saturday so now every once in a while i can make it there but nice. um yeah that's been huge and i i, don't, I have youtube tv i did the same thing i was like let me buy YouTube TV. I'll like, I'll watch more football games or, I'll, you know, during football season or uh, <clears throat> watch the basketball games a little bit. Oh, the Celtic season started. Let me watch them. And uh, more so now I just find myself like the only reason I really go on Snapchat is I watch the, the sports center updates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I watch this literally, I think is the only thing I use Snapchat for. Um, I go on there and they do a brief kind of overview and cap. And within like five minutes, I can get caught up on kind of what happened in the league over the last like week and a half. And uh, I'm like, all right, cool. All right. Yeah. Um, I know. It's all about like, I feel like so much to content now is like, you know, like how quick can you absorb something and yeah. so much short form content. And I mean, there's still value, I think, in long form content, but for the most part, you're going to be like, it's just boom, 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 it's just gotta boom, be boom. it's gotta be quicker yeah. yeah which is interesting and funny too like i don't remember the last time i sat through like a full new movie you know like i don't remember the last time i just like sat down and watched the movie i don't know if that's it's a been a lot because of covid i feel like what do you say you know, like, people aren't going to movie theaters either so like i feel like <laughs> people aren't putting out movies because they're not gonna that bring too um I, although this year there's like a big lineup of movies that are coming out um supposedly but i think the other thing too is like even if i do put a movie on and um 
I mean, or anybody in this case, I guess if you're home and you put a movie on, there's a million other distractions that can happen. But like, yeah. if you're in a movie theater, like what else are you distracted by? You know, right. um, the dog, the cat, the dishes, like all that stuff, the laundry is, is not in your sight. It's out of sight. It's out of mind. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, which is interesting. What it, when you talk about long form and short form, when you are putting like, um, videos out or when you are um thinking like social media platforms what do you think is prime time uh video length so i think it's for me like i'm very much um when i'm creating something it's all about like your purpose and intent right so Mm. like what what's the story you're telling who do you want to see the story um etc so like for me when it's something like you know, maybe that's going to be flashy or has more energy. Um, you know, maybe it's just to get someone excited for something, you know, keep that under two minutes, make it boom, boom, boom. Like yeah. you can create emotions like that pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to someone, like if I'm interviewing an athlete, maybe they're like an international student and they go into depth of why they came to the U S to pursue mm-hmm. their dreams of whatever sport they're playing. Like, you know, there is a true like beginning, middle and end to that. And, um, you know, some people like when they go into long form content, like we're trying to draw people in and probably at the end of it, you might be like, wow, I feel like I really know that guy or girl now. Mm -hmm. Or like, wow, I never knew that about him or her. Like, you know, I'm going to go to their game to support them. Like they've been through a lot or like, you know, that kid's got a lot of good character, whatever the case may be. Like we want people to be drawn in right away in long form content but then again the story is also gonna be what keeps them there Um, and of course you know that can come with certain shots and you know how entertaining is the individual if there's someone who's like very plain and not much emotion you know you do what you can but obviously the more entertaining the person is the better Mm -hmm. um but i think it all comes down to like what the intent is of it so if i'm getting like you know, again, using my background in college athletics, if I'm getting someone hyped up for a game, maybe or like a little promo to come to the game, like it's going to be like, you know, flashy highlights, like boom, 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 back to back, like probably a high, you know, or a fast beat instrumental um, with, you know, like strong hits in the instrumental. Um, And then as far as long form content, you know, like that's definitely something that you'll probably see more on Facebook too, because there's not Mm -hmm. really video restrictions to that. You know, on Instagram, it's like a post and it's the IGTV and, you know, so that's <laughs> another step, you know, it's like another thing. And then it's like this big or you got to turn your phone sideways. So it's like people don't want those extra steps. And yeah. <laughs> it's funny how that comes happens, but it's what happens. Um, it plays out. Yeah. But uh, so like at SIU, we knew that we had a lot of alum that were attached to us that, you know, showed their emotions back that were supportive and interactive but people who are 40 to 80 years old they're on facebook and not instagram so like more of our interactions on instagram were from like student athletes and their friends and you know people of a younger demographic so also realizing that as well and what kind of content resonates you know with those age groups and whatnot um but i personally like i mean i love both you know i love it's fun to say edit a dunk and make something that gets you hyped up and whatnot. But I mean, if I said I can only pick one or the other for the rest of my life, I'd probably pick long form content. Like there's again, the storytelling, like that's at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And that's how I feel. I'm a, I'm a big picture guy. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate and it's weird uh, because so much of it is going short in our day-to-day lives like we were just talking about but there's so much more value in my opinion in a long form because you can understand the context of it right like i threw an alley-oop to my teammate the other day but we were down 25 so (laughs) put that in a video yeah and you could make it look dope and flashy but that doesn't mean that we won the game like <laughs> yep. um and, you know that's the misconception of social media too you know uh-huh. like every, everyone's gonna post the good but not no one wants to document the bad for the most part 
and yeah. under you know understandably so but um yeah it's you know i i think like you were just saying with the long form content there's more a whole perspective of things and mm -hmm. uh to me it's just authentic you know it's you're connecting because it's real and because you can relate or because you know for some reason you're emotionally attached to whatever they're talking about um mm -hmm. you can be emotionally attached to an alley -oop, but how long are you going to be emotionally attached to that for you know yeah. <laughs> the five seconds that you just watched it for yeah so. if you were to watch you know uh the the whole game and understand that you know say we weren't down 25 but we we had just come back down from 17 and that put us down one at the end of the game right like you would be more thrilled by the fact that you just watched six minutes of a team decreasing a lead and then all of a sudden they're right there within a basket and uh, right. that's the alley you you know play that puts them down one point now that says something because you're like wow that comeback was crazy but the alley-oop at the end was absolutely insane yeah as opposed to remember that alley-oop <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right you know? yeah and like you said you know you're you're building a story it's not just mm -hmm. flash here it is for two seconds and yeah flash, and that. i i always my my business partners have always said like facts tell uh and stories sell uh because over a long period of time um building deeper emotional connection not just superficial is, is where things uh right. happen the most but aside from all of that um what is like your uh if you, if you had to say what your favorite video ever created is on your end what what would you say the, the your your favorite masterpiece of your own that's a good question um it's funny because like when you think about stuff at least i'm sure a lot of people who like do video editing think the same or you know whether it's a photo like you may like it then and then like a year later you're like oh my gosh like what is wrong with me that's terrible you know because you improve <laughs> and you see things differently and you know when you come back to it and whatnot but um I had to do a documentary um, as far as my master's like final project at SIU. Okay. So that's the piece I'm proud of. It's called Athletic Identity. Um, I want to say it's the full length is probably 20 or 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere in there. I'm forgetting um, at the moment, wow. but it's about athletic identity and basically um, analyzing and going into you know what happens when i'm no longer an athlete um because when you're at the visual one level a lot of people think that they're gonna go professional and you know mm -hmm. hey you're allowed to have your dreams and goals and whatnot but um it doesn't matter if you make it professional because at one point or another that's gonna end too um so you know and then of course there's always the factor of injuries and there's a ton of things that go into it so really you know like what's that psychological mindset at? that like, all right, that's it now. There's no more practices, workouts, games. Like, what am I doing with that time? Or wh who am I as a human? Um, mm -hmm. For a lot of athletes, that's also their social life, like being with their teammates, hanging out with their teammates outside of the sport. Um, so learning how to, again, be social in maybe a new realm that's not necessarily sports oriented. Um, so it was really interesting. Like, I talked to this one woman on campus who, was our faculty athletic representative, but she was also like kind of into sports psychology around and, you know, just sports science as well. And she had a lot of really good things to say. Um, and then I interviewed a combination of student athletes who are like seniors or kind of coming out of it and then people who are now in their professional careers and are no longer student athletes or just, you know, no longer athletes in general. And you'll see a lot that like if you were an athlete you end up working in athletics because of how much they loved it and they want to stay around it or you know help those that are now coming after them um but like for instance this one girl like you'll see that she doesn't really have a plan like her sport is her life and she doesn't want to think about life after that because that's just so much of what consumes her and like you know, and that's okay to be devoted to something so strongly, but at the same time, it's like, that's what creates like that uh-oh moment. Like, mm -hmm. 
that's what will hit you hard. And, you know, just because you have a plan B doesn't mean you're not fully devoted to something. Um, and uh, so again, it's like pursuing these, these individuals of outside of just being an athletic person, um, you know, trying to get out of them what their other interests are. Um, I was just going to say like other hobbies have to be present in these people's lives. Like, right. you know, um, for it, it, and it, it kind of resides within your sport. Like there's certain cultures that resonate more with certain sports players, right. music and basketball are one and the same. Right. So like, that's big um and there's a lot of that um just goes hand in hand with what someone might do like a ski team or a snowboarder right like you, they may have certain hobbies that they kind of <clears throat> outside of skiing and snowboarding that they're passionate about maybe right. it's hiking mountains when there's not snow on them right yeah. like <laughs> certain yeah. things like that um uh, probably all play into it but and there's there's uh, beauty in that too because like um it's funny when i had an internship when i was at LaSalle, i inter interned at this place called new tv and uh mm -hmm. part of my internship responsibilities there was to produce a documentary and at the time i'm like you know what like that sounds so boring like i don't even watch documentaries like forget that like i came here to like produce like a sports talk show like i have no interest in <laughs> documentaries and then now I'm like, here I am talking to you saying like, I love long form content. Like I want to story tell, I want to do authentic raw stuff. So it's like, you know, putting yourselves in new experiences, like you won't, you'll be surprised. Like, oh, like I actually like this and you will never know if you like it unless you try it. Um, not to sound like a parent trying to get their kid to try new food, but you know, that's <laughs> really what it is. And, um, you know, thinking back to high school, like, you know, it was just basketball like I did well in school because I wanted to play basketball or like I did this because oh, wow. it helped me be better in basketball or like you know whatever and that's what I loved at the time and that was fine and um you know I don't have any regrets with that or anything but now it's like there's almost so many things that like I want to try that it's like geez there's not enough time in the day you know I, like <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you said that I'm like, I want to go scuba diving, but I also want to get better at this. And then I want yeah. to go to the gun range and then I want to go to here. Like, there's so many things that I want to um, try and explore. And um, it's, is it, is it weird to you when other people aren't like that? Is it like, yeah, like, it's kind of like a, what do you mean? Like, you don't want, you don't want to try that? Like, right. Cause, there's there's so much to learn and to me like like not to be like so textbook but learning is actually pretty exciting you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah. when, you, when you learn something new or like oh wow like i can do something now that like x amount of time ago i couldn't do mm -hmm. or like i know something now it's like i could put that to use that i didn't know before or maybe it's just interesting like or maybe it's just an experience that you can now tell a story about like right like, right yeah. so that's like the value in it um, one of the recent things, like, to me, because, you know, who knows what this whole COVID situation, like, even once it's gone, it might change our country forever, you know, in a new way, like, people might go about things differently and whatnot. So, you know, there's some times when I think about, like, all right, do I have to reinvent myself? Or do I need to start pursuing something else? Or again, have, like, a plan B if, mm -hmm. you know, the sports world is never the same, etc. And, uh, like, I started just like trying to learn more about investing, whether it's in the stock market, I'm um, trying to learn more about like real estate investing. Cause like, you know, I'm young. I want to like make my money work for me too. Like how do I produce that growth over time? And you know, if it's something I don't like, then I don't do it. Or, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know, like it's just, but, but it's, yeah, don't say I, you don't like it before you try it. Right. Like, yeah. <laughs> right. And at least I have that in my back pocket. Like yeah. for me with the real estate investing, um, like the best way for me to like, that I feel like I'm more most engaged. is just like putting on a podcast when I'm driving or like mm -hmm. if I can do work and listen. Um, Cause like, I don't know, like reading about something like that or watching a YouTube tutorial about something like that. Like it hasn't, resonated with me yet so i already know like all right this is what's working what's not working um that's you know. that's a good point um you're, you're just 
and you're someone who's very self-aware too, where some people don't um, cultivate that as early as kind of we have. Mm -hmm. Uh, So your ability to be like, okay, if, if just because I'm not consuming, um, you know, real estate content from YouTube doesn't mean that I shouldn't pursue real estate and learn about it it's just finding a way to consume it that makes sense to me i'm big on on podcasting too and driving um but it's the same way some people like to work out with blaring you know music death metal and yeah it's that (laughs) next and like other people like don't need music or some people like to work out um inside and some people like to work out outside uh it's you're getting you're getting a workout in right you're sweating you're getting endorphins but you're doing it in two different ways it's Mm -hmm. the same way you can learn um and that's what i would say is the the best thing about us being here in this time is we have endless endless literally pathways to learn the same thing we have so many different options you can watch a TV, uh, you know, um, TV show about it. You can watch a documentary series about it. You can watch a movie about it. You can go on Instagram and learn from a specific person. You can listen to that person's podcast while you're in the car. You can go to YouTube. You can sign up for a master class. You can go get your MBA. You can, <laughs> like, there's just so many literally endless options. Um, but it's, hard to it's hard to wrap your head around that because there's so many how do I explore them how do I know okay I tried so many of them I should just probably move on if none of them resonated um and I don't know it's there's if you had to explain 2020 in one way because I think over overwhelmingly we're, we're all kind of everything we've talked about in the last 20 minutes is kind of um, as a result of how the last year has played out, um, which is crazy because it's literally been almost a year um, since the U.S. kind of went into um, COVID shutdowns. So if you had to explain as like a society um, in five words, like what has happened to us, what would you say? Like if you had to give like certain attributes or characteristics or things, um, how would you explain that? Um, so I think, you know, like not actually producing a sentence here, but, you yeah. know, it shows like, no, no sentence. I want like, yeah, I want like, uh, so character, reactive, proactive, um, I would say creative, you know, um, and then, uh, appreciation, honestly, like, so I right. say character cause you know, how, how are you handling tough times? Are you mm-hmm. soaking? Are you maybe soaking for 24 hours and you're like, all right, I'm going to bounce back or and then react, you know, you're reacting to what's going on and then being proactive in the sense of like, and creative and like, how can I turn this around? Like if you're a business owner and you've been hit by COVID, what ways can you be proactive and creative to hopefully keep your business alive or do something new to bring a new business mm-hmm. um, and appreciation, you know, like, just health in general, whether you believe this virus is real, fake, as serious it is or not, who knows what to believe with the news, but like, you know, it just makes you appreciate like, all right, I have my health or like I have my parents, for example, um, you know, just thanking, being thankful for that every day. Cause you know, if you don't have your health, you're not going to be so good. So <laughs> um, health, to me, like health is everything because it affects obviously everything you do and how you behave and what you can do. Um, so if you have your health and there's a lot to be thankful for. That And that health comes in, in many ways, um, yeah. mental, physical, emotional, spiritual, um, sexually, who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all of it. So yeah. I am trying to think of any better words that I could come up with to add to those five. And I can't, um, those are (laughs) pretty, uh, spot on. Um, maybe I would use like synonyms for some of those words. Um, 
like I said, gratitude as opposed to maybe appreciation or um, <clears throat> opportunity as opposed to creativity um, or optimism as opposed to proact uh, proactivity. Um, character, though, the way you explain that um, is huge. I really, really um, like that point that you bring up. And with that, if you are becoming, um, I guess the synonym I, the synonym I would use is um, the the more self aware, right? Uh, that you are, whether that you're handing handling it well and your character is established, or that you're not handling it well, and now you're seeing the uh, negatives of your reactions but you're seeing the opportunity for growth with character so you can improve your your character you can um improve you know m maybe your um forms of income so that you are not stuck in those uh oh moments um, but i'm gonna i'm gonna pair your word opportunity with perspective as well because for you know, sure. how you look at things is huge you know again it kind of goes to like are you going to be negative and so and be like, there's nothing I can do. Like I could easily sit here and be like, COVID has canceled sports. Like there's nothing I can do, but like <laughs> I've emailed, like, I don't know how many athletic directors at schools, <laughs> like, you know, different teams, you know, like I wouldn't be the, the videographer for the Hudson Valley Mountaineers. If I never cold emailed them and say like, Hey, I see you have a game coming up. Can I come film? Yeah. Come film. I came, I went film. They liked it. Now we have a relationship. So like, yeah. you know, and then, if they're if you're trying to be optimistic and you're looking at a certain perspective and you're not finding any opportunities then that's when you know like okay something needs to change and then mm -hmm. that's there's the opportunity there as far as what can i be doing differently to get myself out of this situation yeah and um, i i think so, uh, um, you know, i think you know i hope everyone's just keeping their head high and mm -hmm. doing what they can you know just i would i would say alongside those is just understanding that you can um seek help and that uh right. support is massive um uh, so i think a lot of people have realized this year as well or over the last you know year and a half um what it means to have support and what it means to um spend more time like we were talking about before um with those supportive structures whether they are hobbies or whether they are people um spending more time with those supportive things that help you stay afloat that help you stay optimistic that help you stay creative uh, i think that's been huge and i think what everyone always tends to forget and i'm always reminding myself of is that it's a constant conversation, right? It's not like there is no finish line. There's no, I made it. There's no, uh, oof, it's over. Yeah. It's literally constant. And we're only changing more and more. Once again, full circle, bring back, we're more short form content. And that's the way of our life now is, you know, it used to be you read a book and learned. Now you listen to it on, uh, on you know, one and a half or two and a half, you know, uh, times the speed, and you're done in 20 minutes. Yeah. Um, so like, it's constantly being able to adapt. Yeah, which is I I agree, and um, I think along with that is you know influence as well. Like, are you are you putting out stuff that's encouraging? positive conversation and positive engagement or are you complaining virtually that you know oh, this whole pandemic thing sucks like yeah I, you know it does obviously stink for a lot of people but like how are you encouraging others to you know be in a better place than what they are now or are you you know like are you reaching out to someone and just giving them tips on how to be a better athletic trainer or personal trainer? Am I teaching someone how I did a certain edit if they reach out? You know what I mean? Like yeah. just like kind of giving back as well. Um, I think because you can important. be support for other people, right? Yeah, and uh, um, probably you know a big reason someone um, whoever read that email you sent out uh, was probably on the other end of it, like 
wow, he went through the effort to like seek this out and, and send that. So like, yeah, I'm going to help that out. I always say, if you ask questions, I'm willing to answer. But if you just look at me and hope that I, you know, <laughs> give you the answers, it's not going to work. Right. Uh, it's not going to help. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny. It's crazy. And I think but, it's, you know, like just being persistent too, like, like I said, like cold emailing has been a big thing of mine since I've been home. And for the most part, a lot of them don't get a response. Don't answer. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you know, sitting here now, I could probably think of every single person I emailed or come up with a good list. But it's like, I don't think about that every day. Like, it's just like, you know, on my to do list, like send three emails or contact this person or follow up with this person. Like, and then I check that off. And if I don't get a response, well, I just forget about it because it's like, it's whatever yeah you know it's out of your well, I, I remember the ones that do respond and that whether it's yes or no you know and uh that's a good point and your once again your your self-awareness to realize like okay this is something that i love for the simple fact that i'm willing to reach out and cold email so many people right. i wouldn't do that for x y and z you know industries or um you know whatever it may be uh so that's two totally different realms of just being able to like see okay i am willing to do this for that um so that means that i'm gonna stick to that i'm gonna continue to pursue it it has value to me somewhere um and it's funny how like like sometimes things come full circle in that aspect because uh for instance long island university was a school it got to the point where it's like, I just want to shoot. Like, I want to add stuff to my portfolio. Like, yeah. I don't want compensation. Like, just give me a press pass so I can go and shoot. <laughs> I can come shoot. And I, even like that, like, wasn't getting response. And like, I'm really offering free work. Like, <laughs> just hit me up, you know? And uh, so Long Island University was one of them. And now this weekend uh, on Sunday, it's actually... <laughs> I'm actually going to Long Island University to cover that football game I told you about. Okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's funny about it was it's not that the person that I emailed got back to me. It's that I'm on, like, this email chain that, like, has freelancers on it and whatnot, and this guy has a production company, and he passes along gigs. So someone had emailed them, like, hey, Long Island University needs some camera operators for their football broadcast this weekend. So I emailed the person. It's like, I can work and got the gig, and it's like, that's funny. Like I offered free work and didn't get it, but now I'm going, and I'm going to get paid. Getting paid for it. <laughs> so it's just, you know, like just putting yourself out there, I guess. I don't know. Like it's, yeah. you know, if you just keep trying, things will eventually come up. Um, you know, ideally, like I would like to be there with like an actual camera and catching clips and photos mm -hmm. and whatnot. And like being like on the field where as far as this job goes, it's going to be broadcast based and I'm going to be operating a camera for a TV feed and not necessarily for like social media content. Yeah. But that, that's what, that's still like, if I see the lady I emailed, I'm going to say like, yeah. I emailed you, you know, like the office still stands. I, I don't have a problem doing that. Um, yeah. You know, I would cool. say it a bit more professional than that, but you know, have a business card ready and be like, Hey, you obviously know I can make the trip here. Like I'm here to work. Like, uh -huh. I can provide, you know, ABC. I'm willing to do this. Like, if I got to get COVID tested before I come, you know, fine, whatever, whatever the case may be. But, like, you know, I'm willing to do this if you reply to my email. So, yeah. And then the, the other cool thing is you never know, you know, who else is going to be on that crew with right. you. So, the other connections you could make, and then someone could be like, dude, uh, you know, it's nice working with me and you, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing this over here at this time, or I can't make it this weekend for this team that I do something for. So you want to fill in for me? I'm, I'm willing to recommend, and I'm sure they would let you do that. Right. Yeah. It's it's seeking out opportunity for sure. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you the other you know you you kind of reach a hump at some point, and we both will uh, where opportunities seek us out, right? And um, there's people cold emailing us for certain things. And um, that equally has to, you know, be where we respect that and, you know, answer. <laughs> and whether it's yes or no, 
and um, then also understand like, okay, when do I say yes and when do I say no? Right. What what factors um, make that answer a part of you know what I do and what I don't do and how I spend my time? Mm -hmm. um, I think just to go off that real quick, mm -hmm. like I feel like so many things are undervalued these days. Like mm -hmm. even just people who work a nine to five job and get X amount of salary, like I feel like so many jobs are underpaid. And mm -hmm. like whether it's you know you training someone or being in the creative world, like people will always want, want, want. And we forget that like, you know, we spent how many years at an institution learning these skills. So that's value right there. Yeah. You may be providing a certain amount of equipment for something, or maybe what you're teaching them, like, all right, they'll train with you for a week or a month, but like now they know what you taught them so they can use that for as long as they want. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's evergreen, you know, like that's, <laughs> so, you know, like to me, it's just, I don't know people will so easily take and they forget like how much went into that for them for you to share that with them or for mm -hmm. you to teach them that etc um so you know if you're in a freelance entrepreneur point in your life i just you know stress don't cut yourself short um you know be patient enough to explain the value of something to someone um yeah. you know like someone might not understand that a camera costs thousands of dollars or, you know, weights cost money or, you know, whatever the case, a facility costs money, whatever the case may yeah. be, um, you know, have the patience to explain it to them professionally. And if they still don't value everything that goes into it, then, you know, you have to bite the bullet. Is it worth yeah. doing it for not what it's worth? Or do you just, you know, show them the value and move on to the next? The um, other thing, to, um, um, you know, I'm thinking of is like, <laughs> think of all the free internship hours we already put in like in school right and uh then to be like you know someone to to question what you do or, or how much value you can bring it's like well um you know i i spent four five six seven years learning about this stuff i spent thousands and thousands of dollars I worked for free for hundreds and hundreds of hours uh, so that I, I could do this to the best of my ability and I could be um, an answer for your problem or if you're a solution to your inconvenience. So that's a good point. Yeah, I like that you said that. But what is uh, what's on the, the up and coming and um, just for you in the future with you know, whether it's real estate or investing <laughs> where, where, where are you seeing that going um so that's going slow like i mean i yeah i uh i opened up a roth ira which is basically in investing for your retirement so it doesn't mm -hmm. get taxed um i did like i had the robin hood app and i was doing trading with that a little bit um i think i'm gonna kind of inch my way out of that just because it's gotten some bad publicity lately um mm. i personally like it a lot because i feel like it's just very easy super but, easy interface yeah yeah so like you know we'll see about that um real estate wise like that's that's gonna be slow like i'm not in a rush to like go buy out a property and yeah. you know do this and that and um next thing you know be thousands of dollars in the hole but <laughs> i know like for instance with how I am personality wise and how I am towards risk and whatnot, like the type of real estate investing that interests me that I've learned about so far is house hacking, which basically mm -hmm. like say you, you know, you buy a property and your mortgage is X amount. Um, you could rent out part of your property to say a tenant. And then, mm -hmm. you know, ideally their rent to you would be what your mortgage, mortgage is, is maybe yeah. more or, you know, Maybe it's a portion of it to help you pay for things, whatever the case may be. Um, to me, that sounds interesting. There's other things too, but like, again, you know, I also know I'm not making a steady income. You know, I don't have a full-time job and not that that, you know, there are ways around that. There's, you know, ways of borrowing money and doing whatever, but I know for me and how I like to do things, that's not the route I want to take just yet in my life. Um, so, I have another... Yeah another random question for you do you remember anything we talked about on the first podcast uh, <laughs> <laughs> when was that i feel i was i feel like i was here but that i was like maybe 
you know, for was, like a break or something? It was almost a year and a half ago. So maybe that was, it was home like for like Twenty. It was the end of twenty nineteen. Remember we talked about basketball. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course we did. Um, um, but yeah. tell, me, uh, tell me about what you've been up to. I mean, it's I've been talking so much. Tell me about you know. Your <laughs> I'm stuff. a question. I'm a question asker, man. Yeah. Uh, dude, um, I've been playing a lot more basketball. Um, in terms of working, um, I basically um, when COVID hit, I helped my um sister start basically working at the gym with me the sister that i live with um she had just passed her national uh, her national personal training certification um test and so she ended up coming to start working for the gym then the job she was working um obviously she didn't have to work uh because it wasn't deemed essential she was closed down so for two months straight uh, me and her helps the owner of the gym basically record online workouts. And then from there, uh, we basically just started taking on kind of like management tasks and no one else was really, you know, hands on with that stuff. And um, it needed to get delegated somewhere. And now, long story short, um, I uh, am doing a lot of the behind the scenes social media um I'm actually doing all the video editing and that production stuff for the gym awesome. now. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Uh, and then she took on the whole general manager um, role and she left her job in um, the retail industry to basically come work at the gym. So we work awesome. together and live together. And uh, that's you know, it's been cool watching her progress and now she's teaching classes and has tons of personal training clients. And, um, that's been awesome. Would you uh, say she's happy doing what she's doing now? She absolutely loves it. Yeah. She'll, yeah. So like that's like kind of like a blessing of the pandemic in a little bit too. Like she had to reinvent herself and now a hundred percent new experiences. So that's great to hear. Yeah. It's, it's worked out super well. And obviously, um, uh, she's older. So, um, when it, comes to like uh people being in one industry for so long and then being like okay i'm gonna completely take a leap of faith and jump out of it um and leave everything that i built there to go do something else um but obviously her management skills have, have circled over right so those have helped her and now she's um managing less people but now she's managing different entities and, and different things um in a different industry so she's learning but other things are applying and playing on both sides. So that's cool. Um, outside of that, man, I've been, um, I've been really pursuing the thoughts of uh, buying an RV, uh, a mobile home of some sort and, and getting that ball rolling. Uh, I want to, I want to, for one, just put myself in a different environment and, and um, challenge myself again. Um, I always find myself, growing the most when I, I change environments. Um, so that's helpful for me. And uh, I wanna stimulate that growth um, and what better way to do so than to not necessarily leave Florida, but to just put myself in a different living situation and um, have to adapt to it and, and work through certain things and be more in tune with myself because I'm gonna be with myself more often than right. not, right? Um, but also challenge myself to go outside more because it's not going to be awesome to just sit in an RV or mobile home by myself. All the time. <laughs> so like little things like that, that, um, it, it's not, uh, it's not that I couldn't go do it now, but it's that I'm stimulating kind of the environment to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, and that being said as well, um, investing in all of that has been forefront of mind and, and just getting financially, um, uh, squared away more so which is leading me to the idea of getting rid of overhead payments and not having to pay for rent um, which is also why I don't want to buy an RV that is like you know sixty thousand dollars and have a monthly payment because that doesn't make sense either I want to pay off student loans mm -hmm. and then be 
really squared away. My money coming in is for me to turn around and invest and double, not um, for me to pay bills with. So um, that's been really forefront of my mind. I've been saving up a lot for that. Um, podcast is doing well. Um, I have someone doing all the editing for me, um, which has been awesome. super helpful. Um, and uh, because it, it kind of just came about like the fact that I, I took over all the responsibility at the gym and I was like, okay, <laughs> I need to balance out somewhere. I, I was running thin. Um, so that, um, what else? I don't know. Not a, not a ton outside of that stuff. Basketball, um, money, finance, investing, um, the gym, the gym, <laughs> um, podcast. I think that's it. Awesome. Hey, as long as as long as you're doing something, you know, and you have a plan, so <laughs> yeah, it all sounds good. It does. It, it's a. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since things have like changed massively. So I'm a. I I've been getting more in tune with um. Uh, overall, I want to dive more and more into Eastern practice, like medicine wise, um, and and um, philo uh, philosophy, right? So whether it's um. You know, like. Europeans, right? Like, uh, you know, Greek philosophers and um, things of that nature, uh, but also, um, you know, Eastern medicine in terms of um, the Asian countries that are well known for all sorts of ancient remedies and practices, but also just their connection to um, things like um, astrology, right? And how they intertwine all of those things together. I've been diving deep into that. Um, so what I was going to say is, you know, as a, as a Sagittarius is someone who's typically someone who like new environments keep me stimulated. Right. I want to keep learning. I want to keep um, challenging myself. So that's been um, at the forefront, but I've also in the same sense um, valued more of like the slow down, make sure you're getting enough sleep, make sure you're, you know, trying to not, eat and do six things at the same time, um, give yourself uh, ample time to see both sides of the spectrum, not live on, on one too much. I think that helped me a lot this year, so. Nice. Did you hear my uh, dog? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. It, was, it sounded like it was in the neighborhood. It didn't sound like it was like a, uh, it wasn't outside like your door. Or your... No, that's fine. Right. He was just um, losing it just now. I'm like, oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, listeners, if you want to see a cute dog, go uh, go check out Greg's uh, photos of his bring dog. Bring him on. I can bring him on right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let him in. Let him in. We got a cat, too. Uh, you got a cat? Yeah, I got a cat. Actually, all right, you go get the dog. I'll get the cat. Oh, yeah. right. <laughs> I will get him. You should be right here. It's pet time on the podcast. You can't. Oh, he's, he's a lot bigger and harder to handle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be careful. Right. There you go. Two What's three. his name again? This is Ollie. Ollie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what hi, Ali. Aria, say hi. This is Aria's yeah, first time on the podcast. What? What? Cats, cats are a little different personalities than dogs. They don't love to be held for long periods of time. Oh, yeah, he's he's good when I pick him up. He's not really happy about it, but yeah, he, kinda, he chills he, out though a little bit. Yeah, make him a little <laughs> chest scratch. There you go. Ari is sniffing the computer and <laughs> biting the biting the wires. <laughs> Too funny. Got nine lives. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can throw her from anywhere, and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, part in Florida are you at again? I'm I'm just north of Fort Lauderdale. 
on the East Coast. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You uh, so with the RV, would you like leave Florida or just explore like other parts of Florida? For for a period of time, I would stay here. Um, I would I would stay in the local area. Um, <clears throat> obviously, I still have a number of clients. I would still want to leave the gym and things of that nature. Um, so it's a matter of uh finding campgrounds, places to park it, um, you know, um, figuring out uh, those little intricacies. But nonetheless, I would have some overhead, whether I stay at a campground or something. It's just the goal is it will be much less than paying for an apartment. And um, <clears throat> it's just about kind of, uh, you know, finding the one that makes sense to buy. Um, it, for, for me, making, you know, a uh, an investment of sorts, right? With like, um, you know, more than a hundred dollars isn't something that I've really done before. And most people really haven't. So mm -hmm. when you do something like that, um, you, you don't want to just do it blindly. So right. people have probably been hearing about me talk, like talk about it for three, four months. And they're probably like, he's just talking about it. Why doesn't he freaking do it? Like blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, I'm going to talk about it for a while. I'm going to keep it top of mind until um, it makes the most sense to do so. I'm not just going to go buy one on a whim tomorrow right. <laughs> because. Yeah. I think like so much of that, like, like maybe it comes from movies or I don't know what it is, or just seeing people like get lucky and go viral or something, but like yeah. being spontaneous, like doesn't, isn't always great, you know, no. and I, like, it's, like when it's with money, like, like you're doing it right. Like you want to make sure whichever one you invest in is, right for you and it's the right time and like mm -hmm. if it turns out to not be something you like you're still financially sound afterwards you know you're not yeah, exactly it's gotta go be buy the, right, the right person and and most importantly i want something that's kind of discreet not something that like i'm driving down the road and they're like that's an rv from you know a mile away like mm -hmm. if i can park it somewhere and it you know can blend in and sorts and uh it can fit in a parking spot that seems like the most beneficial to me um, for the, you know, cause eventually I will leave Florida and the goal is to be able to drive in multiple different climates and on multiple different, you know, terrains. Um, so uh, I, I am setting the precedent of, you know, the podcast and online incomes to be able to travel in the, um, you know, on the road and, and be around, so. And I think I, I remember telling you that in back in LaSalle, like that's been my, a, a big driving force of me moving here <clears throat> um, was to cultivate, you know, a lot of different skills, um, both personality wise and uh, in my industry, you know, right. career wise um, to be able to do that. So it's working out, it's just taking awesome. time. Yeah. Hey everything that's worth it right takes takes a bit of time and work yeah. and thought and whatnot so without a doubt man but uh dude it's so good catching up how's alex doing how's how's she yeah it's been great and she's doing well um so her job has gone like completely remote mm -hmm. um and actually like has gotten to the point where like even if covid completely disappeared and everything went back to normal tomorrow like she'd still be remote um, that's which is worst thing. Yeah. yeah it's interesting because you kind of wonder like how much of the world is going to become like that like that's our awesome. business is going to like save money and tell people work from home but yeah. anyway that's a whole nother topic uh she's doing well though she still works um at a local restaurant from time to time to mm -hmm. you know pick up some extra gigs and make money yeah sure. um but yeah she's good we we take turns seeing each other on the weekends um, mm -hmm. of course sometimes things come up and we don't see each other but uh um yeah she's 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 always like miss optimistic you know she looks at the <laughs> literally always yeah. <laughs> yeah she looks at the the bright side of things in every situation and uh you know always supportive of me and my decisions and whatnot so mm -hmm. yeah she's she's always just awesome <laughs> that's huge Ari is literally jumping all over the place she's <laughs> i knew i shouldn't have let you in here Ari. <laughs> more <Airtime. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well uh 
I think that's a good place to wrap up, man. I, I know I got to head back to the gym. I got some clients coming up in the afternoon. So sounds yeah, good. So I know. You're going to bring her with you too? No, I wish. <laughs> but, uh, dude, it was good catching up, man. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I got to I gotta do a better job of texting people on a regular basis and just checking no, them myself. Dude, there's, there's so much, uh, so much more productive things to do, but. The, the once in a while check-ins never, you know, never hurt, uh, mm-hmm. but don't feel like you're obligated to do that ever. I think that goes for anybody and everybody. Yeah. You know, um, so. But yeah, likewise, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's it's always good talking with you. We always have really good <laughs> conversations. So. Yeah, dude, it's it's seamless. It's, uh, you know, it goes back to, oh, I think I'll, I'll say this every single time. It goes back to... <laughs> having lunch in the in the calf man we were there for like two hours at one time yeah (laughs) or three hours i was uh, great you know like time flew by obviously for us so yeah which is you know to go back to what we were talking about before man support and and reaching out and slowing down and having good conversation will, will never go away as something that we should do as humans so right um in the meantime man uh where you know everyone can go check out your work um let lay out your your website your um social media whatever it is yeah so um website is gcamalone.com so just g and then c-a-m-i-l-l-o-n-e uh dot com and then on social media i post more of my like actual work uh mm-hmm. at greg camelone on instagram mm-hmm. um, facebook is greg camelone and then twitter is gcam123 yes sir uh, that's me on social and i'll follow you back most likely so if you want to hit me up hit me up yeah <laughs> <laughs> he'll answer unlike some of those uh people he cold emailed yeah um and and go check out holy oats too i'm gonna order some right now yes yep you'll get fresh baked granola yeah made by these hands <laughs> um i can't wait for it yeah no thank you i appreciate that support and oh, of uh, course man yeah you know, all the Best of luck to you too with everything and yeah. make sure Limitless Theory blows up because there's a lot of informational pieces in here, Thank inspiring you. pieces. So just keep going at it. Thank you, man. You too. I uh, I, I definitely will. Um, without uh, that being said, thank you everybody for listening. Until next time. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I am. We are. Life is limitless. All right.